There's a legend round here. A killer buried, but not dead. A curse on Crystal Lake. A death curse. Jason Borey's curse. They say he died as a boy, but he keeps coming back. You have seen him and lived. Some have even tried to stop him. No one can. Welcome to Rabbit and Blue Radio with the Skeleton Crew. This is the 12 days of Friday to the 13th. I'm your host, Alex, joined as always by Michael J. and our special guest host, Dan Chase. Friday the 13th, The New Blood. Alright, the MPAA was really cracking down around this time. This movie was butchered to death, much like Part 2, but I think this one might, might have gotten hit a little bit harder. Okay, well, where, where, where do you want to go with this? What do you guys, what's your overall consensus of this movie? Well, can I tell you first off why I think that this is the beginning of the new era in Friday the 13th? New era. New era. That's it. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's about the, the third era. <laughs> but you know what? This movie, the way they did the whole Carrie thing versus Jason, see, yeah. they were trying to make it more interesting. Like you guys said in the, le- in the what are we, seventh? The last episode, yeah, yeah. you said how they reintroduced, you know, they introduced a new angle to Jason, which is comedy. Right. See, well, and now they're trying, they're saying, well, we already did that. Let's make it serious. But what can we do that's different? And they said, we're going to make a girl with telekinesis. Now, yeah. <clears throat> they didn't, they didn't need to try to make it more interesting. Every movie until this one was very interesting because it had the same formula. You right, know, right. they, they, they changed it and it was too drastic and, it really was horribly written. All of the yep. characters, aside from Miss Shepard, Cruz, and Tina, were not developed at all, and they're really hard to care for. But, like, I didn't feel bad that Maddie died. I didn't think Melissa was a bitch or anything, but I, I just you didn't, didn't think Melissa was a bitch. Okay, where did that come from? How do you not think she was a bitch, dude? If you were a girl, would you let that dork touch you, <laughs> dude? Well, if you don't have to first of that. all. If 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 I was a dork, I would pray for a girl like that to touch me. Yeah, and would you? What is she an asshole? Because she's not going to stoop to like the pitiful level like that of guy. Of course she is, dude. She said she's a stuck up bitch. I'm sorry, but she is. Whoa, them fighting words. Yeah, really. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. The thing about this movie, though, is why they made her with telekinesis is obviously they ran out of ideas. They figured, you know. <clears throat> nobody can really fight Jason. You know, you can shoot him, stab him how many times. So I got an idea. We won't do any of that. We'll just move with your mind. And it was basically like, well, I, you know, I've heard this, um, this has been said about this movie before, so I'm not going to take credit for it. But it's basically like Looney Tunes, you know, like the Roadrunner. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was just ridiculous, you know, falling it's... through stairs. And, you know, Kane Otter's down for all that stuff. But good Lord, you know, it was just like a... When 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 that um when the light swung and hit Jason, he fell through the stairs. I thought I was watching like Home Alone. <laughs> Did you hear the noise that he made too? Did you guys hear the noise that he made too? No. When he when he when he when he, when he gets hit, he's like, got, like, when he's like he's like he's like he's like. He's like <sighs> oh my god! Fuck. No no, you know what I thought I was gonna hear when you saw him at the bottom of the stairs, like freaking freaking fucking fucking like the whole yeah, Joe Pesci. Years before Home Alone, dude. Oh my god. Marv? Marv? I know, but when I watch that, it's just like. Maybe, dude, maybe that's where John Hughes got the idea to do that in Home Alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really doubt it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, hey, the movie's would, just would you kinda, guys, 
I don't would know. you guys feel different about the movie if, let's say, because you know that that there were talks that New Line was talking to Paramount about making Friday Seven, Freddy versus Jason. Do you think that a Freddy versus Jason movie would have worked in 1988? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. It would have been Definitely. so much better than doing it. Yeah. Um, how many years later? Right. Uh, so much. much right. Oh well, yeah. Because that's when they were at their peak. Though. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? It's it's almost like putting Sylvester Stallone against Arnold Schwarzenegger in the '80s. That would have been perfect. Doing it now, who cares? They're freaking sixty-five years old each. Right. Very. Right. Exactly. And, and you know that's what we were talking about on on uh, the last show or the one before that. I can't even remember at this point. But basically, you know, the time is timing is everything. You know, if you look back to the '80s, I mean, come on, it, Jason. Freddie, they were at their pinnacle. They were the biggest thing around. Whether you were a horror fan or not, you knew exactly who they were. You know, you got Freddie with his own TV show. I'm not sure if he had it at that point, but let's face it, it was pretty much, you know, at least being thought of at that point. You know, you had all these toys and, and basically the explosion of the horror slasher genre starting with these two series. So at that time, yeah, it would have blown the oh, fuck up <laughs> dude that would have been amazing why wouldn't it have worked and it, they would have been more yeah. true to character and you know what's really weird honestly when they did release that movie these guys they were long way out of their prime it's almost like yep. hulk hogan going against the rock in 2002 right. like hogan's like okay maybe yep. if this was 1985 that would have been like a great match if you know <laughs> like that would have, i don't really watch wrestling but i think that would be awesome they should make it happen well, they did uh, ten oh, years ago. I didn't see it. Well, you know, it was still good, but it wasn't the Hulk Hogan that everybody would wanted to see against The Rock. It was this old, broken-down guy. They were out of their prime. Some right. people well, just have a pinnacle, and this was not it. Two thousand. Well, we're, we're, we're nineteen eighty-eight. Yeah, we're going. If, we're if going. We were to, yeah, to, if we were to do it in nineteen eighty-eight, you think that, that would be the pinnacle? Perfect. Yeah, that would have been the pinnacle. Yeah, because we would have been on what Friday Seven and Nightmare Four. There you go. And they, Freddy didn't become a total joke yet. And well, no, Nightmare Four was uh, the one. Four. Oh, oh, oh. Well, yeah. actually, no. Four was the one that, by the time Four was said and done, that was going to be. See, Four was going to be the last Elm Street movie because Robert Englund at that point didn't want to do it anymore. So that was going to be the end of it. That was like the cutoff point. By the time Five came out in 1989, uh, which was only a year later, but still. Freddy was a cartoon of himself by that time, and especially in Freddy Fed in 91. He was definitely a cartoon of himself. So. Dan, Dan, don't you love that? Robert England didn't want to do it anymore after part four. It's not even a year later. Hey, Rob, want to do it again? Okay. <laughs> Sign me up, boss. Yeah. There, there's a lot of what the F moments. I, I mean, we can go, like, right away. Like, one of the weirdest ones was, uh, remember when that, that uh, really ugly girl... Maddie was trying to give herself a makeover because the burnout didn't want to go out with her. Little yep. push-up work my ass. Yeah, and he wanted to go out with a girl who had a mouth that could uh, fit a watermelon in it. She uh, makes herself over. Then for some reason, why does she go outside to look for the guy? Like, since when was he ever outside? Yeah, well, you know what? That got cut. That got cut. She wa he was outside because he was supposed to be in that little place where she ended up. Oh, really? Smoking pot. Yeah, if you watch my uncut version of Friday the 13th Part 7 where I took all the deleted footage in and cut it back in, you see that she's in the, um, that, that David guy is in that little barn or whatever shed or whatever it is yeah. with the other chick smoking up. Well the, well, the one, what the F moment besides, okay, okay, he was out there. Well, the other one is she was digging through the same patch of grass for like 10 minutes and all of a sudden she finds it. Yeah, well, that's because <laughs> yeah. she's, well, see, that's no, because she's a little dense. She's a little bit, you know, she's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. Yeah. That's it. I don't know. And, uh, like, one of the most hilarious parts of the whole movie is when, when uh, Tina's fighting Jason, and then all of a sudden the, the plant pot with the head in it goes flying at Jason. That was great. That was yeah. great. And then, so that then, pretty much encapsulates the whole movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Dude, okay, let's let's get into character development. How? Oh, God. <laughs> or lack thereof. Oh, my yeah. God. Dude, the funniest <laughs> part of the movie for me, that the only thing that makes me crack up out loud yeah. about this movie is when um, Nick, when he's trying to be a badass, he's like, 
I hang out. I hung out with a real bad crowd. Yeah. I got thrown out. Like he's trying to make like he's some badass. Okay, here goes. I grew up in Pittsburgh. I used to hang out with a real bad crowd. Then my dad kicked me out. Now I go to night school. Yeah, like, ooh, <laughs> wow, Nick. I uh, here, yeah. you, you just you, you you look like you walked off the set of nine hundred two one zero, and suddenly, uh, actually, he was on Days of Our Lives for a while. Oh, there you go. And suddenly, I'm gonna believe that you're some like you're uh, you belong in the gang in part three. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> be like, it'd be like, it'd be like, Fox, local, Nick, open <laughs> yeah. the damn door. Speaking speaking of part three, guys. Okay, Alex, would you rather see a fire third? Part three or B? B. <laughs> Your facts uncalled for and incomprehensible. Anything besides part three. You're on drugs. I, I will watch You're this. On drugs. I will watch this movie every night if you tell me I could watch both those movies every other night. Right. I'll take this one each each one of those nights. What Friday seven? Yeah. <laughs> How about Friday six? I like Friday 6. I gave it a good... How about Friday 5? Listen, I like 6 because I forward through those scenes. Of course right. you do. That, that's why you don't watch the complete movie. I skip every paintball scene and I say... Yeah. Yeah. You don't watch the complete movie. <laughs> I say this was a pretty good movie. Okay, yeah. were, there, were there any characters that you cared about? Um... I like Nick. Okay. <laughs> what, was the worst, <laughs> what was the worst writing part... Friday 13th Part 1, or this one with a uh, big purple elephant? And... Part 1. <laughs> part 1. That This was better, and I'll tell you why this is better. You know what I like about you? You hardly sweat at all. Um, <laughs> come on. He's like, or, or yeah, when you're like, he's like, I see it. It's a big purple elephant. Like, what the hell? I'm, I'm sitting there like, what are we yeah, watching? But to demonstrate that he understands... That she's crazy and she came from the psych ward. What's worse, the acting or the writing? Yeah, I can't uh, decide. It's so tough. They're both marginal. They're both okay. Yeah? Do you really think so? Yeah. It's a pass. How about the Neanderthal man seeks nourishment? <laughs> that was good stuff, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The this Neanderthal this man movie's just like, ah, oh, man, I don't know, something about it. <laughs> something about it just rubs me the wrong way. Do, do, or, you, know, you know what rubs me the wrong way? This was a ripoff of part four. No, it wasn't. You have people partying in a house again, and next to it is the family house. And then you got this guy who's supposed to be like a comic book writer, like the Star Mummy dude. Yeah, 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 Eddie. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Eddie. He was just a lame version of, of uh, Crispin Glover's character in right. part four. I don't see it. You know why? Because Eddie didn't get the girl, and Jim Jimbo did. So, yeah, well, Eddie's so annoying. I want to punch him in the back of the head. No, I don't think. So. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, he's like, Star Mommy, Star Mommy, Starlacon. Oh my God, was he annoying or what? I don't know. Um, okay, well, there's a lot of controversial parts of this movie. Obviously, the ending. Oh wait, I just thought of one really bad line again. Ready? <laughs> yeah. Right. Happy fucking birthday. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Quick, get a balloon. Yeah, right. Happy fucking birthday. And then he gets his head crushed like a grapefruit. Yeah, and that was cool when they showed the unedited version of that. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yep. That was good. Okay, so yep. remember when Jason jumps up out of the floor to grab Tina to pull her down into the basement? Yeah. Yep. He's wearing his hockey mask, even though she already used her powers to make it pop and fall off his face. No, he's not, is he? Yeah. Where? It's back on his face again when he pulls her in on into the basement. Seriously? Yeah. Continuity issue. I'm going to have to check that out because I don't remember that. Yeah, I remember that. I was like, why is he wearing his mask again? <laughs> you sure yeah. he just didn't have the straps on his face? No, it, the mask. Maybe I'll get a screen cap and put it under this episode or something like that. I don't I don't know. I'll, I'll double check that. We'll get to the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah, we'll get to that investigation. Yeah. So anyway, so at the end of the movie... Tina's, you know, screwed. Jason comes back. He's going to kill her. All of a sudden, her dad bursts out of the dock, wraps a chain around him, and pulls him down. There's a right. million reasons why there's something wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what do, what do you mean? What's wrong with that? It's a father coming to protect his dog. Uh, okay, you want to get to number one? What do you one? mean? Where did he come from? <laughs> 
No, Dan, he doesn't know. What do you mean? What, oh. is he, what do you mean? I don't know. <laughs> Mike, He's zombie John Shepard. You you oh, think God. there's nothing wrong with yeah. this guy being in that lake for 15 years? Not at all. <laughs> oh, good lord! What's, what's wrong with it? <laughs> We're never gonna make it to Manhattan, dude. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm serious. What's wrong with him? I'm telling you, you don't think the police would have. Dr- Drag this the lake and got his body out of there by now, dude. The lake is deep. They're not gonna want to no, dude, dead is... body. <laughs> <laughs> that waters run deep. You know, yeah. You, you know what I love? Everybody only has a problem with the fact that he didn't look bad enough. They have no problem. Dude, first of all, if they didn't drag the lake to get Jason out of there, why would they drag the lake to get her dad out of there? It seems pointless. They probably uh, didn't even know he was in there. Tommy didn't go telling everybody, hey, listen, Jason's on her. Somebody yeah. had to know that he was down there. But maybe they wanted to I'm leave sure him there. I'm sure they interviewed Tommy, and Tommy told them at one point, yeah, Jason's at the bottom of Crystal Lake, where he belongs. Uh, <laughs> that ending, though, is, 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 is fucking off the wall. And I love it. There are so it's, many it's, different it's, problems with it. It's, 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 such, it's just such a great thing. Where you see like a father's love for his daughter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And here's here's the other problem with that whole yeah. scene. What, what what is this? In uh-huh. the beginning in the beginning of the movie, yeah. you you see the dad and the mom fighting, and all of a sudden you hear whoosh. And... Yeah, because his fa- Yeah, because <laughs> the father kicks the shit out of the mother, or slaps the shit out of the mother. Right. Okay. So then, and so she does a thing that makes him, that like, kills him. So then, Telekinesis. yeah. Later on, they're in the car and they're talking about how much they miss him, and they're showing the picture of him, and he looks like super the old American, you know, the old American dad. He looks like a yeah. logger. Yeah, he looks like a really nice guy. And then Tina wants to bring him back to life, and instead right. she brings Jason. Hello, this guy is a fucking wife beater. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say. <laughs> yeah, but she loves. The people that are abused always go back to the abuser. Yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess, uh, wife beaters are people too. Obviously. <laughs> like, like, what kind of message was this movie trying to send to people? Right. That like, oh, daddy daddy just had a couple cocktails. It's no big deal. Yeah. Then at the end of the movie, he's set up to be the hero. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's that, a re- what dude, is he that? Totally redeems himself. <laughs> then that way. <laughs> Who needs him to redeem himself? I I don't need him. No, but... that's it. That's it. That was his duty to get into heaven. Because in order to redeem yourself, women... though, you have to have somewhat of a fucking character, somewhat of an arc. I mean, really. He, yeah, but he, he was did. In the beginning, that he was, was the whole beater. reason. That yeah, was his he... arc? Yeah, that was his arc, and then this is his redemption. Dude, that arc sucked ass. <laughs> so it was wife beater to redemption. To save yeah, <laughs> coming out he of was, a lake, you know what, nobody ul- knows how. You know what, ultimately... Her father was the Messiah of Friday 7. Uh, okay, ready? I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this ending for you. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. I, I'm not a huge fan of this movie. I don't hate it. But, you know, it's just a fall by the wayside movie to me. But I'm going to save this guy. And I'm going to save the... I'm going to give this movie some credibility. Here we go. Mm-hmm. When Tina's dad wraps the chain around Jason and pulls him in the lake, that's not really Tina's dad at all. It's just Tina's telekinetic powers doing all the work. There really isn't anyone there. And the way they show it in the ending, you're looking through the eyes of Tina. And this is a better way of making peace with her dad and getting rid of Jason at the same time. I disagree, but if it makes you sleep better at night, I'll go with it. You don't think that is a much more plausible and credible ending than thinking this guy is literally in that lake for 15 years and came up looking fresh as a rose and no, pulled this No, because it makes in. no sense. Well, sure it does. She used her telekinetic powers to do everything else. Maybe in her mind, it was her dad in her heart, but it was really just her doing it. Yeah, but if you watch the original ending for Friday the 13th Part 7, you see it zombie John Shepard. But, that but, comes so, up but that's out still, of the water. It's still stupid, though, Mike. He shouldn't, be in, the, he shouldn't be in the water. Yes, he should because he got killed. He drowned down there. Okay, Mike. If so, if you're walking across a highway and a car hits you, they're just gonna leave your body there. Some people do. That's why they call it a hit and run. <laughs> no, the police are gonna go. Well, this fucker's dead, and they're just gonna take off and leave you there. <laughs> Dude, 
dude, some people do. That's why they call them hit and runs. Some people do. Dan, is he understanding my question? Yeah, absolutely not, but that doesn't surprise me at all. Basically, what you're saying is it's it's not possible at all. You know, why would this happen? It just doesn't add up. And when it doesn't add up, well, then let's face it, guys. I mean, it's not really the best writing in the world. I mean, I think that's that's the moral of the story here. Um, I know what you're saying, Alex. I think that kind of like a Fight Club deal, you know, kind of mm-hmm. sees himself. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. as it, I, I know exactly what you're saying. Now, let me let me pose this question to you. Now, do you think that would have worked if, if that was really the ending? Do you think horror fans at that point in time would have wanted something like that? Because it's not like it's mind-blowing stuff, but that, that makes you think a little bit. Do you know what I mean? So I wonder if, you know, this is before The Sixth Sense and, and, and movies like that that really made you think. So I'm just wondering if a slasher at that caliber at that time, if, if something like that would be effective. What, uh, an ending where... With your ending that you said, yeah, absolutely. Well, hell, look at the Jason Part 8 ending. I don't think they were too concerned with that. And look at... And, <laughs> good point. <laughs> and, and, Very and look, good point. Look at the Jason Part 5 ending. That was, you know, yeah. that was a huge letdown, like we said. I, I don't I don't know if they... I don't know if their standards were really at any level to uh, to debate this. See, I don't think I don't think it was like low standards. I just think what you just said makes you think a little bit. I think it kind of, you know, sets the bar higher. To, if anything, not to bring it down, to to bring it up because I think that's a great idea. I think that would have been, you know, it, that shows the telekinesis angle and it, and it throws a little something extra on it at the end, which mm-hmm. is great. You know, right. I think that would have worked actually very well. Right. Now that's not what they did, and you know at the, the ending that they gave, like we just said, raises more questions than anything. I mean, exactly, and they're, and they're <laughs> dude, but they're the what the f questions. At, at least mine is: if you want to bash mine, you have to bash it creatively. That one, yeah. you got to bash like stupidity. Like right. you know what would have been an awesome ending? She that happens. Then all of a sudden she sees her mom. I guess well she's already dead, but let's just say her mom wasn't dead. Yeah. She sees her mom. She goes, Mom, Daddy saved me. And, she, and she's like, Honey, your daddy's been buried at Green Lawn Cemetery for the last 15 years. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, she looks back and, like, her dad's there and he winks at her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, that'd be like a Star Wars-esque thing. Throwing oh, like, all Jedi the on that day. shit. Yeah. But see <laughs> yeah. how it works now, Mike? You see how it works? Yeah, but I still think that the way they ended it was was perfection. Oh, go to hell. Okay, ready? Uh, or, originality of the storyline. Ten. I would say ten because I don't think they... I can't believe that they actually went with that. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, original. Uh, Is um, it original? Well, no, they, no, Carrie. Okay, it's not really original. Well, it's All right, well, eight. Eight. Right. Um, I'd say probably originality. Let's see. I'd probably give it a... Uh, I'd say an eight, a solid eight. Really? Yeah. Well, for originality, I mean, I don't know. I just, right. I think it's original, but at the same time, like I said, to be perfectly honest with you guys, I, I think if us three put our heads together, we could have came up with something a little better than that. But, cool, you know, you do that's that. just yeah. me. Okay, uh, location. How do you feel about the entire atmosphere of the movie? That, that I like. Back on Crystal Lake. I, I like that a lot, actually. I thought it was a little too dry for me. I like a little bit more greens in my in my Friday Thirteenth. Like the see, first. I was going off kind of the mood of the whole movie too. It kind of had I don't want to use the word dark, but it had kind of an eerie feeling to it. This you know this um, this particular set where where the house was and in relation to the lake. I don't know what it is. I guess I can't put my finger on it, but there's something about that movie that it's it's a little bit creepy. And I and I got to say that's probably the the scariest creepiest part of the movie whether it be intentional or unintentional, but it just had a feel to it. Mhm. Okay, hottest girls. Huh. Uh there was a couple to pick from. You had Maddie, you had Tina's mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a milf hunter, so I don't think I'd like her too much. Look, look at Mike pulling out the porn references right away. Well, you know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, everyone knows what he does when he gets off the show. I disagree with your statement. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, you got the blonde chick who looked like a young Kelly Bundy. Melissa. Melissa, you got... Yeah, she was not. She was all right. But you know what? Overall, I can't say that there was a a, a female in this Stand film out. that... 
No. Yeah, not a yeah. standout at all. I think Melissa was a standout out of all of them. Mm. If I were to She's choose, blonde. I probably would choose that too, Alex. You're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. Out of those, out of that crop? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that crop. Yeah, how can, well, I figure, how can you like somebody that was that, like, just asshole and mean. I can't do that. I really don't care. I'm just going on looks right now. Yeah, any yeah, port in the storm, Mike. Any port in the storm. Yeah, but and that was a storm. Yeah, but yeah, I, it, I, it was a shit storm. Yeah, but I couldn't have anybody that acted like that, though, because then I'd be afraid that she would yell at me during the act, and that's not good. Mm-hmm. Best couple in the movie. Mr. and Mrs. Shepard. Yeah, there you go. There you Damn, go. you, you took my... Yeah, I, I love people that... that Why, yeah. I oughta... Yeah, it was like a Three Stooges moment. <laughs> Stop it! I wish you were dead. Yeah, how about how about favorite quotes from the movie? What did Melissa say to the door? She goes, "You just don't turn me on." Yeah, or was like, or when he goes to walk out at one point, she's like, he's like, "Where are you going to take a shower? I got a date with a soap on a rope." <laughs> hey guys, can I bring up to the fact that um, you know this is Kane Hodder's first appearance, correct? No, yeah, we didn't mention that. Well, see, here's the thing I always wondered about this, too, because, you know, he's the most known or whatever. You would think he would be in at least uh, a handful of them. He started at this one. Doesn't it seem like he should have started a long time ago for him to have the notoriety and the, and the you know, be the face, if you will, of Jason to this day? It just seems like this one, technically, you know, it's not the best, but, you know, you look at, you look at how Jason moves and you look at the guy who played him, I think he did a great job. And, and that, I think, was, was a pretty standout thing, if anything, of this movie was uh, Kane Hodder's performance in it. Jason's look and Kane was what put this movie over. Right. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> you, you just said what I said in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But exactly. see, that's the thing. People forget, you know, that's that. this is the movie that kicked it all off for Kane. And, you know, he's basically the face of Jason to this day. So, you know, I think that that should be a little... Um, little side note, if not, you know, one of the main things of remembering this movie, you know? I, I think it's weird that um, this movie was, I, I, I know Mike's going to disagree, that this movie was worse than Jason Takes Manhattan, but Kane says this, he, Kane is very proud of this movie. I don't know why. Because yeah. it's a great film. <laughs> Mike, is there anything you don't like? <laughs> yeah. Like what? Twelve monkeys. <laughs> Jesus. God, Mike likes every. He, he, you make me look like I look like the most negative guy in the world. Twelve monkeys I hate, and the Mothman prophecies I hate, and uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I hate. You know that movie being John Malkovich. I yeah. love to get inside fucking Mike's head for a day. Being Mike Sankovich. <laughs> you don't want to get in my head. I you, mean, I, no, I just, no, I I do and I don't. I don't want to see what the fuck's going on in there. I mean, <laughs> is it like Inception where all the buildings are just like upside down and everything's just ass backwards? Because, I mean, that's the only explanation I could get. Oh, my God. Okay, uh, we did Hottest Girls, Best Couple. Okay, Sex and Nudity. There was the one naked girl on the lake. Yeah, yep. and I didn't like her. No, there was more than one naked girl when... when... David and the other chick were having sex. I think her name was Robin, you know, the redhead. You see her tits, but I didn't like her tits because they were too big. I didn't like her. She looked like a Sesame Street puppet with that big mouth and that hair. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like you could she could suck your dick and you could her at the same time. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Wow. You know what I love about that? All the girls listening to this show probably thought Mike was a sweetheart. And he's like, <laughs> such a nice guy. Like, oh, he's so cute. Well, no, I can be sometimes. <laughs> right. Well, now is not that time, ladies and gentlemen. Now is not that time. Oh, my Back God. Back in your seatbelts. you got to admit, I give great drops, dude. As if, as if the MILF Hunter reference wasn't enough to turn all the women off. I think Mike just clinched it with that one. Oh, man, the, <laughs> the two girls listening, yeah, that, that's definitely gone by this point. Well, we know that girl, uh, Disturbed Voices, is listening, I, and I don't know where, where this is going to go with you, Mike. I think you lost a fan. You think? I don't know. <laughs> I'm Let's not see. trying to lose a fan. I'm just, like, talking. Uh, you know, if, if you guys meet me, like, on the street, I'm I'm very just, like, a nice, like, agreeable type of person. I don't usually have this type of personality. This this. Yeah, it's like a party on, on this show. In a sense. 
Favorite quotes from the movie? I think we already did that. There aren't too many good quotes. <laughs> I like when Dr. Cruz is getting like butchered with the weed whack, and you're going, he's like, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. oh yeah. How about when Dr. Cruz pushes the mom in front of? Uh... That was awesome. Oh my! That God. was awesome. <laughs> How about all his lines? He's like, "You're not trying." Yeah, there's a lot of male chauvinism in this movie, isn't there? Well, you know? you know what it is. A lot of the people on the film were were gay, I believe. <laughs> Wait, what? A lot of the cast members and all were gay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> what? <laughs> that had absolutely nothing to do with what I said, but okay. Uh, hey, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> um, sexy? <laughs> oh, God. Where were we? <laughs> oh, you oh, fucking guys. I got tears Thank God running for the up. added button, huh? I got to No, I'm leaving this in. No, I please had... don't. <laughs> 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 I had tears running down my eyes just now. Okay, oh. that was so out of left field. Yeah, just, <laughs> oh, they're showing us in this movie. Oh, I thought they were all gay. Like, wait, what? Oh my god, that was hey, so no, funny. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not editing a second out of this whole part. <laughs> Oh it's so God. funny how we can be so on sometimes and be catching all points, and then Mike fucking drops a bomb like that, just oh. throws it all off. Okay, this isn't gonna go anywhere. I think that, I think we should end the show right here. Oh my okay. God! All right, guys, we're gonna. Do leave... you want to rate it? We're... No, let's just rate it how gay everybody was. <laughs> Tens all around. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's let's rate this movie overall. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, uh, overall. I'd give it a four. Yeah, it's not memorable. It's not anything. It's, uh, you know, if it's on, I might watch it for about maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll lose interest and, uh, you know, see what else is on. So, right. Solid four, you know. That's on a good day, too. Michael J.? I will give it, because it is part seven, and I do enjoy it, I will give it a seven. Wow. Wow, that's a high rating for this movie. I enjoy it. And how about you, Alex? Because I think it's better than part three, I have to bump it up, so I'll go from part three's four rating to a five. Brilliant. Yeah. Although that's still kind of low. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's right on, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, really, Mike. Uh, you are very you, you are a very easy guy to entertain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> that's what I'm learning about you. <laughs> you know what? There are times when I love to just sit there and stare. We have a ceiling fan in the house here. And there are times when I like, have nothing else going on. I'll just sit there and I'll like stare at it spinning and it like puts me in a trance like state sometimes. And that explains it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this second debacle of our twelve Friday thirteenth episodes. <laughs> <laughs> you got five and this one now. Uh, uh, okay, well we're all gonna take a trip to New York City next. God help I can't us. wait. Go, go ahead, Mike. No, we're not. We're going to head to Vancouver. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's not Jason Takes Manhattan. It's Jason Takes a Boat and heads hightails into Vancouver. And for once, Mike is 100% right. Oh, this is going to be a challenge. Yep. <laughs> All right, get ready for my most challenging episode, where I try to show how that movie is not that bad. Oh. In uh -oh. the eighth installment of The 12 Days of Friday the 13th, on Rabbit and Blue Radio with the Skeleton Crew, exclusively on Harbid.com. What's the matter? I lied. <sighs> lied about what? About everything. You just don't turn me on, really. But come on. At least I gave you a chance. You just didn't come through. <laughs>